Sometimes horror movies are seen by everyone and for very good reason. There's a fantastic marketing campaign, they get a wide release and hooray everyone gets to see the blood and guts all over the floor. Then there are those other films that for whatever reason completely slipped under the radar. Doesn't mean they're bad, just means that, I don't know, maybe they annoyed someone up at the gods of marketing. Who knows? Let's go have a look. Before I go on, make sure that you check out the original article by the wonderful James Egan over on our website. I am Sean Ferrick for What Culture, and here are 10 perfect horror movies you've never heard of. Number 10, Excision. Excision is such a tour de force of tight writing and visceral imagery, it's hard to believe that it's Richard Bates Jr.'s first feature. This underrated body horror centres around a delusional misfit, Pauline, who serves as the poster child for teenage angst. Butting heads with everyone she sees, primarily her domineering mother, Pauline hopes to win the approval of others by pursuing a career in medicine. Because of her less than stellar grades and psychotic tendencies, this is easier said than done. Thanks to the staggering amount of gore, it's easy to perceive excision as mindless splatterfest. But Richard Bates Jr. ensures that twisted violence is always relative to our protagonist's plight rather than relying on it for shock value. On the surface, we shouldn't be cheering for Pauline, especially after seeing her head is brimming with images of her peers being mutilated, but Anna Lind McCord is astonishing in the role, making her surprisingly relatable. Because of the witty script, cerebral action and McCord's towering performance, Excision feels like a cult classic waiting to happen. Also, it stars John Waters and Malcolm McDowell. Honestly, what more could you want? Number 9. We Go On In We Go On, Miles Grissom has become so consumed by his fear of death, he places an advertisement in the newspaper, offering $30,000 to anyone with proof of an afterlife. Naturally, the ad invites a horde of crackpots and charlatans, but after filtering through the responses, Miles finds three candidates who may have some answers. However, he quickly realises that once he opens the door to the next world, his life will never be the same. Due to the minimal budget, We Go On can't dress up its scares with special effects. Fortunately, it doesn't have to. Instead, it focuses on the atmosphere rather than cheap scares and excessive CGI. Because the metaphysical elements aren't over the top, it feels more believable, which makes Miles' paranormal encounters much more unnerving. Although most spooky stories can be bogged down by clunky exposition, the script here is airtight. When Dr. Ellison, played perfectly by Smallville's John Glover, details the rules of the afterlife, he sounds like he absolutely believes what he's saying. If you're looking for a more subtle supernatural film, We Go On is worth a look. Number 8. Road Games In Road Games, Trucker Quid, Stacey Keach, and Hitchhiker Pamela, Jamie Lee Curtis, start following a van driver under the belief he's a serial killer. It may sound akin to Steven Spielberg's duel, but Road Games feels more like Rear Window on Wheels, since the cat and mouse style has major Hitchcock vibes. Now, Road Games could be pretty boring, since there's a fair bit of filler, but Keach has so much chemistry with his co-stars, you can't help being captivated every time he's on screen. When the plot focuses more on our leads than the mass murderer, you genuinely don't mind since you want to get to know these characters. Because a lot of focus is put on our lead duo, we genuinely care when they're in mortal danger. Even though there's no real mystery, you still find yourself on edge thanks to the surreal visuals, layered character development and nifty camera work. Despite solid performances, a compelling plot and a sensational finale, Road Games tanked at the box office, failing to recoup one tenth of its budget. But through word of mouth, let's hope it gets the recognition it deserves in due time. Number 7. Big Bad Wolves When Quentin Tarantino declared Big Bad Wolves as 2013's best movie, you'd assume the Israeli thriller would gain a lot of traction, and yet, here we are a decade later and it's still mostly unknown. The story opens up with police officer Michai arresting a teacher, Thror, after he's accused of molesting and dismembering a child. After Michai pummels the suspect, he's forced to hand in his badge. When Thror is let go, Michai kidnaps him, hoping to beat a confession out of him to clear his name. Big Bad Wolves is a real hodgepodge, flipping from black comedy to torture porn in a heartbeat. It switches from sickening imagery to hilarious dialogue so quickly it feels like two different movies have been interspliced. However, this makes the violence far more harrowing. A few jokes here and there leaves viewers relaxed, making it more impactful when things get gruesome. And believe me, Big Bad Wolves is not an easy watch for anyone. Number 6. Kidnapped 
Kidnapped kicks off with a hooded man limping across the woods while sputtering up blood. Unable to see where he's going, he hobbles onto the road where he's struck by a car. Now that's how you start a movie. Kidnapped then takes us back in time, showing the events that led to this predicament. As Jamie, his wife and daughter moved into their new house, three criminals break in and take them hostage. The nefarious trio promise to let the family go after Jamie empties his credit cards. Even though Kidnapped has a killer intro, you might worry the rest of the film will be a by-the-numbers home invasion drama. Fortunately, director Miguel Angel Vivas puts care into every frame. By utilising long tracking shots, we feel like we are there alongside the family, which makes the invasion more hard-hitting. Thanks to the well-executed editing and sound effects, you can feel it every time a punch or kick is thrown. Unlike a lot of horror flicks, Kidnapped has no deeper meaning, there's no hidden subtext, no profound message, it's just a straightforward horror thriller that's sure to terrify you. Number 5. Who Can Kill a Child? Like Children of the Corn, Who Can Kill a Child revolves around a commune of youths who murder any adults passing through. Unlike Children of the Corn, this Lord of the Flies inspired indie manages to get in the heads of the killer kids. It's never directly explained why these young'uns turned out this way, but we can draw our own conclusion from watching the first scene. The film opens with docu-footage showing toddlers and teens from various war-torn nations enduring every atrocity imaginable. After being tortured, mutilated and experimented on, you can understand how children like these came to the conclusion that grown-ups are the root of all evil. Naturally, it's barbaric to watch the horrors these kids endured. Seriously, no one will judge you if you switch this off within five minutes. But it's equally unnerving to see this brood gleefully torture prisoners or launch themselves at moving cars to slaughter the passengers. These youngsters are not just committing these abominable acts out of some warped self-preservation, they thoroughly enjoy it. Even if you're into unsettling movies, Who Can Kill a Child will push you to the limit. Number 4. Spring after losing his mother to cancer, Evan is encouraged by his friends to go on vacation to clear his head. Almost immediately after he lands in Italy, he falls for a young woman called Louise. Louise is so perfect for Evan, he worries things are too good to be true. Sadly, his concerns are warranted. Even though it's obvious Louise has a secret, it's something nobody sees coming. As such, it's best to go into spring blind. Although the mystery unfolds slowly, it's clear this story is going in directions we never expected, keeping us enthralled until the very end. Although Spring feels more like a cautionary folktale or a Lovecraftian love story rather than a conventional horror, it's surprisingly grounded, since both leads take their unique relationship seriously. You totally buy this pair care for one another, which makes it more hard-hitting when Evan and Louise's blossoming romance takes a dark turn. Because the big reveal is deeply unconventional, and it doesn't work for everybody, but if you covered a horror flick that isn't afraid to try something new, Spring should be right up your alley. Number 3. A Chinese Ghost Story Because China's folklore dates back millennia, it's no surprise their ancient tales are filled with countless monsters, demons and hopping vampires. Even though A Chinese Ghost Story is relatively short, it explores many spooky myths in a way that's beautiful, enchanting and haunting. Our story focuses on a ghostly maiden named Nip, who's forced to lead unsuspecting passers-by to a mystical temple, where their spirits are consumed by the tree demoness. When Nip falls for tax collector Ning, she vows to break free from her master's tyranny. When the demoness banishes Nip's soul to the underworld, Ning takes it upon herself to save her. As a Chinese ghost story can be fantastical and goofy, you'd assume it wouldn't be that scary. But some of the imagery is nightmare-inducing. Watching civilians being attacked by floating heads, tentacled beasts, and ten-foot-long tongues will give anyone the heebie-jeebies. You have to tip your hat to the filmmakers, since they utilised many techniques to bring these mystical creatures to life, including puppets, stop-motion, elaborate costumes, optical effects, and animatronics. Despite spawning two sequels, an animated adaptation and a remake, a Chinese ghost story never got the global recognition it irrefutably deserves. Number 2. The Autopsy of Jane Doe. In Andre Ovredal's supernatural flick, father and son morticians Tommy, played by Brian Cox, and Austin, played by Emil Hirsch, are tasked with performing a coronary examination on a female corpse. Although her name and cause of death are unknown, Tommy and Austin believe all will be revealed once the autopsy is carried out. But as they analyse our Jane Doe's body, the coroners find themselves becoming increasingly mystified by what they find. Like Overdahl's work on Troll Hunter, this gem relies on atmosphere and building tension, rather than indulging in distracting special effects. As we've seen in Overdahl's scary stories to tell in the dark, the autopsy of Jane Doe knows how to be gruesome and nasty without going overboard with the gore. Even though the concept has B-movie vibes, Cox and Hirsch 
take the material dead seriously, compelling us to do the same. Because of their sincere performances, it feels like you're watching a detective thriller rather than a chiller, which makes it more shocking when things get nasty. Number one, sleep tight. Sleep Tight centers around depressed doorman Caesar, who goes out of his way to make others miserable. When Caesar notices his methods don't work on the happy-go-lucky tenant Clara, he develops more elaborate means to leave her irreparably broken. When the protagonist of a story is a villain, it's common practice to make them sympathetic. However, Sleep Tight does away with this trope, making our lead irredeemable. Even though Caesar's pettiness is entertaining, you're never rooting for this creep. But that's not the only reason why it's difficult to watch Caesar at work. While performing his prank and crimes, Cesar is always on the verge of getting caught. Every scene is bubbling with Hitchcocky intention, since Cesar is also a moment away from being exposed. Although director Jean Belagrero is better known for his found footage Zomfest wreck, Sleep Tight is more likely to make your skin crawl. Cesar isn't a supernatural creature or a mystical being. He's a regular person, although regular might be a stretch. The fact that someone this devoid of morals and purity could exist is what makes him truly terrifying. Don't let the title fool you. After watching this, you're in for many, many sleepless nights. And that's everything for our list. If you enjoyed this, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to get in touch with us over on Twitter at WhatCulture. You can catch myself at Sean Ferrick on Twitter. And as I said, don't forget to check out the original article by the wonderful James Egan. Now, until I see you again, make sure that you look after yourself. Make sure that you look after your friends and family. Be kind to yourself and others. Be loving and put that out in the world. I will see you and talk to you again soon. Bye.